show your support, like, share and subscribe. Hello, I am That British Guy and welcome back to another booking video. Now my last video was looking at the resurrection of the United States title and a little bit before that there was a bit of a gap um, before I kind of started bringing this back on a fairly regular basis. This series will now be every single month. And this month I will be looking at John Cena and him winning his 17th world title. Obviously in WWE World the 16 time world champion Ric Flair has kind of been the milestone in terms of world title wins. And when John Cena won the title from AJ Styles a couple of years ago at the Royal Rumble... That was kind of a big thing at the time, but he only actually held the belt for two weeks before dropping it to Bray Wyatt in the Elimination Chamber. And ever since then, he's kind of made sporadic appearances here and there, the last of which being bringing back his kind of thugonomics gimmick at WrestleMania, interrupting Elias. It is obvious from this point that he is going to be making less and less appearances as the years go on because of him wanting to invest more time into his film career and obviously that is taking a lot more of his time away from the in-ring work that he is doing but he is still kind of popping up for those big pay-per-views the likes of Wrestlemania, Royal Rumble, um, Survivor Series and SummerSlam especially. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at the timeline as of kind of the effects of what happened at WrestleMania 35 and the after effects of the Superstar shakeup, and look forward to kind of making it make sense in him winning his 17th world title because I think if anybody in the company is likely to break Ric Flair's record, I say record because obviously depending on what title lineage you look at, he has won far more than 16 belts, but obviously this is the land of WWE. But I think with his career in the company, John Cena is kind of in the best position to break that record. He obviously went through quite um, a few years of kind of being hated by the crowd and has finally won them over. And again, with his sporadic appearances, that's kind of helped in that regard. And I hope that this is probably the best time that he will be received in a favourable light, winning this 17th world title and kind of being put back up on that pedestal effectively as that kind of achievement that they can kind of advertise other superstars want to kind of achieve and go after. So to begin, obviously we had the events of WrestleMania 35 where he came out and interrupted Elias. Elias was then transferred over to SmackDown in the Superstar Shakeup. So if we take the events in the kind of weeks running up to the Money in the Bank pay-per-view, basically both Raw and SmackDown have set out that there will be a series of qualifying matches for places in both the men's ladder match and the women's ladder match there will be four spots up for grabs on each brand in each ladder match. So obviously we're really only focusing in on the men's match here. And when these get announced we get a few sort of names being mentioned that are going to be in it. And when these matches actually start up we get a video message from John Cena saying that he will be there next week on Raw and will be in one of these qualifying matches purely because he kind of spoke to and saw Ric Flair a lot around WrestleMania weekend and this is where we kind of sow the beginnings of what I'm doing is I want to come back, I want to win one more world title um, almost like Ric Flair has kind of put the challenge out to him of we're both on 16 you're still in a position to do this can you prove to me and prove to yourself and prove to the fans that actually you could take that record from me um, and I'll happily raise your hand at the end and kind of congratulate you as finally that record has been broken so that's kind of stoked that fire within him um, it's given him a reason to come back 
and winning obviously the Money in the Bank ladder match guarantees him a world title shot which he will then be able to cash in and hopefully, in his mind at least, win that 17th world title. So he then turns up the next week on Raw and wins his qualifying match against whoever, doesn't really matter, and he gets inserted into that ladder match. Over on the Raw side of things, it would be quite nice if we can get Samoa Joe and Braun Strowman in on that as well. Obviously, Samoa Joe, at the time of recording, didn't actually appear on Raw, but it's been reported that he was meant to appear on Raw, and what with Finn Balor going over to SmackDown, it's pretty much guaranteed that Samoa Joe will be on Raw. And with his dealings with Braun Strowman the week previous to that on SmackDown, Presumably they're going to be entering into a program together so we can get both of those guys in the match. Obviously Samoa Joe, United States Champion, would love to then win Money in the Bank and hold both titles. Braun Strowman would like to win the uh, ladder match two years in a row. He's got a bit of beef with Samoa Joe as well so they can kind of work their feud into this ladder match. John Cena is the third member on the Raw brand. And we can also get someone like a Drew McIntyre in involved in this ladder match as well to really elevate him and let him be seen on this same scale as sort of main eventers. Realistically, if not him, you've got the likes of uh, an AJ Styles potentially going into that match as well. Possibly even a returning Sami Zayn, someone along that kind of level either a kind of bona fide main event or someone on the cusp that we can kind of really elevate up to that level over on the smackdown side of things it is very important that we get elias into this match um, for reasons that will become clear very soon and someone like a kevin owens if daniel bryan is fit and healthy and isn't being put straight back into the program with kofi kingston he would be ideal in this sort of match. As we've got the United States champion, let's put Finn Balor in there as well and get both of these kind of mid-tier title holders wanting to kind of up their game and, and win the world titles on their respective brands, make it feel a bit more important. Plus it then cuts out having to defend both of those belts on the show as well. It just kind of makes a bit more room on the card. We could also potentially get a Randy Orton involved in there as well, who is obviously bona fide main event level, or a Mustafa Ali, someone along those sorts of lines, so that we get a nice balance on both brands of established guys and other guys that are kind of just moving up to that level. Obviously a Roman Reigns as well from the SmackDown side of things. And ultimately, because we've got John Cena and we've got Elias in this match, Elias kind of wants a bit of payback for what happened at WrestleMania, and he essentially takes himself and John Cena out of commission for this match, so neither of them win. But it is very important that it's Elias that takes them both out. He is kind of getting one up on John Cena and writing him out of this match, and kind of blowing his chance of winning the briefcase to then get his 17th title and ideally the winner of this match needs to be somebody like a Drew McIntyre possibly a Kevin Owens on the Smackdown side of things Finn Balor would be perfect because then he can drop the IC title or Samoa Joe with the United States title and then move up to the world title picture and I think it's important as well that the winner of the briefcase ideally by the time they cash it in, if not now, needs to be a heel. And if it is either Samoa Joe or Finn Balor, they need to kind of drop their belts first before cashing in their briefcase. So John Cena ultimately fails at this first hurdle and disappears for a few months. He then comes back just before SummerSlam, basically wants retribution against Elias for what he feels is costing him that last shot at this 17th world title yes he might be able to compete in the years to come but he's feeling that if he's not able to kind of keep up with the younger generation then this might be his 
and probably is in his mind his last opportunity to win this 17th title. So he wants to kind of get retribution on Elias and remember John Cena for whatever reason is this free agent that jumps between brands. So we saw him on Raw, now he's showing up on Smackdown Live as well just before the Fox deal comes into play which will be very important and they set up a program for the two of them to face each other at SummerSlam. Ultimately Elias wins this match as well. There is no point in John Cena winning this. It gives so much to Elias and elevates him further. It also justifies what he did at Money in the Bank and he's able to kind of propel from that maybe this could be what pushes him into a program if Finn Balor still got the belt where he is able to win the Intercontinental title off of Finn Balor and if Finn Balor has won the Money in the Bank briefcase this could then free him up to potentially use this in the future. John Cena doesn't lose anything in losing this match and is still going to be considered right at the top of the company so if he then does manage to insert himself into a title picture, it's not going to be an issue, the fact that he's lost this little mini feud with Elias. And from there, he goes away again. Elias can use this to kind of build more heat for himself. He was the one that kind of got rid of John Cena's chance of winning the 17th title. He got rid of him as well at SummerSlam, and he can develop from there. The next big four pay-per-view is obviously Survivor Series, and if the Fox deal hasn't come into play yet, it's very close to being. Um, and because that's kind of seen then probably more as the A brand, at least because of that television deal, and especially because of the events of the previous Survivor Series where Raw completely whitewashed SmackDown Live, SmackDown Live needs a very strong showing, especially in those kind of five-on-five -five elimination matches. So what we will set up is a Raw Smackdown dynamic again because I'm sure they're going to keep hammering this home. And ideally on the Raw side of things we want the kind of more established guys, the ones that have been at least involved in the industry a lot longer, especially involved in um, WWE a lot longer, who have had multiple world titles between them. And then on the Smackdown Live side of things, the slightly younger guys who are still making waves and kind of growing their own kind of brand within the company. Maybe they've had a few kind of recent successes, but aren't sort of established guys within the company. People like a John Cena. So again, this is where his free agency comes into play. He appears back over on Raw therefore also establishing a separation between Elias and John Cena kind of heads up this kind of old school team for Raw. It would be very easy to include Triple H in this as well. Um, guys, yes, like maybe um, an AJ Styles who, although he has only been in WWE a very short period, he is seen as an established name within the industry. He's already won a couple of world titles as well. He's already had kind of showpiece matches at WrestleMania. And on the flip side on SmackDown, we need kind of the, the younger guys or the newer guys, the guys like the Buddy Murphy and the Mustafa Ali possibly even maybe integrating the likes of a Kevin Owens in there, back up on his way up to the kind of top of the card. Again, you could have someone like The Miz on the Raw team, who is very WWE. He's very kind of established with his brand. He's multiple-time Intercontinental Champion and feels like he's been there forever. What you don't want is the likes of an Andrade within that um, Raw team. If he was on SmackDown perfect opportunity but someone like a Rey Mysterio is on Raw so we'll put him in that team. Guys that can kind of eat these losses to the newer guys and really elevate them up the card but also the guys on Raw don't really lose anything within this and ultimately we need the Smackdown team to obviously win and win quite strong. We need them to lose maybe only one or two guys and ideally if you're going to have maybe the likes of a Kevin Owens in there he could be one of the last surviving guys so 
somebody like a Buddy Murphy or an Ali could get maybe one or two pinfalls over somebody like a Rey Mysterio or an AJ Styles and then get pinned so they still actually take something away from the match. And ultimately what we need is kind of a three on three or four on one situation where John Cena is kind of the last man standing trying to kind of fight for the old guard but ultimately is completely overcome by this new generation and that again kind of sowing doubts within his mind of whether he can really hang with these guys anymore and then when he loses again he disappears for a few months obviously his next showing will then be at the Royal Rumble it wouldn't even hurt to have him either very close to the beginning of this match and kind of maybe even act as the Iron Man of maybe he's got his mojo back after these couple of setbacks at last pay-per-views and kind of get him into the final four and fail at that hurdle or we have him in say as the proverbial lucky number 27 um, and, and kind of all the connotations that that has of maybe actually the stars are aligning and this is his moment and he's going to win the Royal Rumble and go on to main event WrestleMania and win the world title there. But again, unfortunately, he gets into the final four or maybe even the final three in that case and still falls at the last moment. Obviously, we're then on the road to WrestleMania, so he's able to make a few more appearances and the next time is just before the Elimination Chamber. And again, similar to what we saw with the Money in the Bank ladder match, a few qualification matches in order to win his way into that match. Again, on the Raw brand side of things, still to keep him away from the Elias thing, because he can still use that to his advantage, Elias can. And obviously John Cena qualifies for the Elimination Chamber and it's felt like this is really his last realistic moment. He kind of set himself this goal getting on for nearly a year ago now, just after WrestleMania 35. We're closing in on WrestleMania 36 and he's kind of been around less and less time. He's failed at the money in the bank he tried to get retribution for that against Elias at SummerSlam and failed he tried to lead um, a team of kind of the old guard against these newer guys at the Survivor Series and failed again he tried to come back at the Royal Rumble and either had a really good showing if we start him off early or he managed to get that lucky 27 draw and still failed this is basically last chance saloon now, if we have him come out at, say, number three, not right at the beginning, but at number three, he can last pretty much this entire match and manage to just about eke out a win. Ideally, again, at the end, getting rid of, say, a much more established guy like a Seth Rollins if he's lost the Universal title by this picture or overcoming an AJ style, someone much more established. What you don't want him doing is getting the kind of final pin on, say, a Sami Zayn who you've been trying to build up for a year, or a Drew McIntyre who is still kind of trying to find their feet in the main event picture. Ideally, you want this last pin as well that he gets to really be the only pinfall that he gets. He's kind of just surviving and just about managing to stay toe to toe with these guys and then kind of an AA out of nowhere and he manages to just about eke out a win. Almost like then he's going into his match at WrestleMania as the underdog. Because obviously if we have him win this Elimination Chamber match, this will be the qualification for a title match on the Raw side of things um, for the Universal title. Whereas what we can have at the Royal Rumble is a SmackDown style win it to challenge for the WWE title at WrestleMania. And again, what is important is for this WrestleMania moment, the fact that he is going up against some kind of established guy. Somebody like a Seth Rollins. Somebody like, to a certain extent, even a Braun Strowman, maybe, if he's been dominating everyone. Or a Rey Mysterio, but probably unlikely that it's going to be him. Or an AJ Styles again. What you don't want is Universal Champion Andrade going into this match with a John Cena and then completely derailing any of his momentum. Or an Alistair Black who has just won the Universal title 
say, at the Royal Rumble, and now he here he is losing it only a couple of months later. That would be almost suicidal for that other guy. You need some kind of a more established guy who it doesn't really hurt them too much if John Cena beats them because he is going to here at WrestleMania. He is going to get that moment where he has finally beaten the record. We could even get some of the older, more established guys, and especially Ric Flair in here, coming out, shaking his hand, giving him a hug, raising it, almost as if to say, well done, You've over the course of your career, you have earned that moniker of most world titles within this company. I don't begrudge you beating my record, you deserve it, very well done sir. And then on the next night on Raw, while he's having his celebration, he gets jumped by the winner of the Money in the Bank ladder match, whether that be somebody on the Raw side or a Smackdown star switching over, and again, this needs to be somebody like an Andrade or an Alistair Black, maybe, or another NXT call-up that's just come up, even if it's like an Adam Cole or something, who managed to... I don't think it probably will be him, because he won't be coming up for the Money in the Bank ladder match, but this type of person, a Buddy Murphy, maybe, somebody who, in attacking John Cena and then cashing in Money in the Bank and winning the Universal title on the Raw after WrestleMania 36, shoots them up to the top of the company. Whoever it is, it doesn't really matter. Again, ideally, it kind of needs to be a heel because of what they're doing, but the crowd will go for it anyway because it's a Raw after WrestleMania. And from that point, John Cena's had his moment, he then is able to put over and elevate somebody else within that position. He can kind of withdraw a lot more and disappear into the background and maybe only make one or two pay-per-view showings a year. But ultimately he will go down in history of winning 17 world titles within his career, more than anybody has done within that company. So there we go, that is how I would book John Cena's 17th world title win. Please let me know your thoughts in the comments below. If you have any scenarios you would like me to book in future videos, please let me know in the comments below, or you can shout me out on Twitter at RightlyWrongly. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like my content in general, please give the channel a subscribe. Till next time, I have been That British Guy, and I will see you very soon. Goodbye.